Welcome to Electron Line. To illustrate how this method works and how we need to adjust the answers at the end to make sure we get it right, we're going to do the one problem in three different ways. Well, we're going to start all in the same fashion, but then we're going to branch out and finish the problem in three different ways. We'll get three different answers initially, but then when we adjust for it appropriately, we should get the same result in each case. Here's the matrix A, it's a three by three matrix, and we're trying to find the determinant of that matrix. We're going to illustrate the three different paths. First, what we're going to do is we're going to interchange row one and row two to get a one in the upper left corner. We're going to do that, of course, for all three cases. So we're going to interchange row one and row two, which gives us the following matrix. So we have one, 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 negative two, three, and four, and Yep, and then we get 2, 4, and 0. Okay. Next, we're going to get rid of those two elements right here. And again, that's going to be the same for all three approaches at the end here. And to do that, we're going to take the second row, R2, and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 2, multiply times row 1, and adding it to row 2. And we're going to take the third row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive a negative 2 times row 1 added to row 3. Doing that, we end up with the following matrix. Nothing changes on the first row, but here we have 2 times 1 is 2 added to negative 2 gives us 0. 2 times 1 added to 3 gives us 5, and 2 times 1 added to 4 gives us 6. Negative 2 times a 1 is negative 2 added to 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to 4 is a 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to 0 is negative 2. Here we're going to diverge. We're now going to finish this problem in three different ways. The first thing we're going to do in the first method is we're going to interchange row 2 and row 3. And so we're going to do that over here. We're going to interchange row 2 and row 3. When we do that, the problem will look as follows. So here we get the first row doesn't change. The second row now becomes 0, 2, and negative 2. And the third row becomes 0, 5, and 6. Notice by doing that, I have a smaller number here and a bigger number there. Is that necessary? Well, it's just one way in which we could do that. Then what we could do is we could multiply the second row by one half, dividing it by two. So I'm going to take the second row, R2, and replace it by half of R2. When we do that, the matrix now becomes as follows. And of course, we need to keep track of what we're doing here. But we get a one, a one and a one, a zero, a one and a negative one, a zero, a five, and a six. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the third row and replace it by the negative of this number, minus five, times the second row added to the third row. When we do that, the final form now will be echelon form of the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, and here we get a 0. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5 added to 5 is 0. Negative 5 times a 1 is a positive 5 added to 6 gives me an 11. Which means that based upon that method, my determinant, the determinant of the original matrix, the determinant of matrix A is equal to the product of the diagonals. So 1 times 1 times 11. Now, we have to keep track. We had one interchange of rows here. We had another interchange of rows there. And we had to divide by 2, which means I need to multiply times the negative 1, multiply times the negative 1 again, and then multiply times the 2. And so that means that this is equal to a positive 22. So that's the determinant of A. We don't know yet if that was correct, but we'll get the confidence that it's correct when the other methods will get the exact same result. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to indeed exchange those two. So what we're going to do for the second method is the same as we did over here. We're going to change row 2 and row 3. When we do that, we get the following Negative results. Two, we get 1, zero, one, one 5, and, and 6. But at this point, we're not going to reduce or make the second row simpler. We're just going to take it as is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take row 3, because what we want to do is get rid of this 5. 
we're going to replace that by multiplying this row by a negative 5 over 2, multiply times R2 and add it to R3. That should make this into a 0. Let's see if it does. So we know that the first row does not change, the second row stays the same, and the third row is minus 5 halves times 2, the 2's cancel, minus 5 plus 5 gives me 0, so this is 0, this is also 0, and minus 5 halves times a negative 2, that's a positive 5, and it's a 6 gives me a positive 11. So now let's see if we get the correct determinant. The determinant of A is equal to, first we multiply the diagonals, which is a 1 times 2 times 11, multiply times, let's see here, we had one row interchange and we had another row interchange. So we multiply times negative 1 twice. And that's it. Everything else is good. So this becomes 1 times 2 times 11, that times a positive 1, which is a positive 22. So, so far we gotten twice the same result. So we're building confidence we're doing this correctly. The third method, we're simply going to take the matrix as is. So let me recopy the matrix. So 5, 1, 1, six, 1, 0, zero 2, two negative 2, and not interchange any rows. What we're going to do is we're going to take the third row, because what, after all, we're trying to make this into a 0. The third row, and replacing it by negative 2 fifths times the second row, and adding it to the third row. That will make this into a 0. So it now gives us a new matrix. The first row is still 1, 1, 1, 1, Oop. 1, 1, 1, only three of them. 0, 5, and 6 for the second row. And the third row, notice, minus 2 fifths times 5, the 5 cancel, that's minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And minus 2 fifths times a negative 2, that's a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4, divided by 5. That's 4 fifths, and that's a positive 4 fifths. Let's see if that's, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'll take that back. I did not do that correctly. Again, it is negative two-fifths times the six. That's better. So six times a negative two-fifths. Let me write that down here. So six times a negative two-fifths, because it gets a little complicated, keeping our head, and adding that to a minus two. A minus two, that would be a minus 10 over 5. So I take the minus 2 and convert it to something over 5. So this becomes minus 12 over 5 minus 10 over 5, which is minus 22 over 5. So this here becomes a minus 22 over 5. Now I have it in reduced echelon form because these are here all zeros. I can now find my determinant, the determinant of A, oh, and I should put parentheses around it, is equal to the product of the diagonals, which is 1 times 5 times a negative 22 over 5. And now we have to keep track of what we've done along the way. We have one interchange, only one, because we didn't do it a second time, so we have to multiply only times a single negative 1. Other than that, I only used row additions here. I did not multiply or divide by any constants. So now when I multiply all this out, the fives cancel out, and the negative 1 cancels the, the negative 22, which is a positive 22. And sure enough, notice no matter how you approach the reduction of that matrix into the echelon format, as long as you keep track of what you've done and compensate for it accordingly, you will find the correct determinant of that matrix each and every time. And that's how it's done.